a week meeting. There, there won't be. There will be. Okay, there will be a leaders meeting after the service. So I came down here. Um, we don't have a huge group here, but we've got good, solid people. So I figured I'd get close to you all since ministry, oftentimes you smell like the sheep. So I might smell like you all this morning. <laughs> let's all stand. Um, let's sing that song. Can you do Fire, Father Abraham, Sister Caitlin? We won't go maybe crazy fast or maybe we will. All right. So if you're not woken up this morning, we can help you wake up, brothers. Brother Wu stretching this morning. Praise God. Amen. We're going to start out Father Abraham. We're going to kind of go real slow, and then we'll get faster and faster potentially. And by the end of the song, hopefully we'll be woken up this morning. Amen. (laughs) All right. Father Abraham had many sons. Many sons had Father Abraham, and I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord right on. Father Abraham had many sons. Many sons had Father Abraham, and I am one of them, and so are you. So are you. So let's just praise the Lord. Right arm, left arm, right foot. Father Abraham had many sons. There you go. Many sons had Father Abraham. And I am one of them. And so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. Right arm, left arm, right foot, left foot. Father Abraham. And many sons, this is hard. Father, sons had Father Abraham, and I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. Right arm, left arm, right foot, turn around, sit down. <laughs> Amen. Give yourself a hand. Praise the Lord. We might be at 50%, but let's get to 100%. So let's all stand. We'll go a little bit faster, Sister Caitlin. All right. Father Abraham and many sons. Many sons had Father Abraham, and I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord right on Father Abraham and many sons. Many sons had Father Abraham and me. Oh, good job over there, brothers. Many sons had fun. Oh, you're going strong, and I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. Right arm, left arm, right foot. Father Abraham and many sons. Oh, it's a workout. Many sons had Father Abraham, and I am one of them, and so are you. to pass the mic off to somebody else. We got our workout in this morning. I was looking for a place to work out this morning, and I was like, well, there's people just about everywhere. So there it is. We didn't have to do it this morning. Amen. Let's all stand again. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, since you got your strong arms, strong legs, we can sing the song, Hold the God's Unchanging Hand. 
This is a classic song because there's no other hand that we can hold to in the time of duress, in the time of stress, and we need it. But God's unchanging hand, he will never change. As Brother Jeremy said, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if you hold on to that hand, it will never change. How many believes that? How many has experienced that? Oh, let's let us hold to God's unchanging hand. Oh, let us hold to God's unchanging hand. Oh, let us build our hopes on things eternal and hold to God's unchanging. Hold to God's unchanging word. Just before we pray, let's sing that song, Oh Lord, send the power just now. I'm going to have one of our brothers pray in just a minute here. All right. Oh Lord, send the power just now. Oh Lord, send your power just now. come before you. We thank you that we all get to come here and fellowship together. We just pray that we all get the thing we need out of today's service and tonight's service to help us along. Maybe in the coming week, maybe in the coming years, we don't know. Lord, we just bless you. We hope that you help us with our hands, that we may do your works, Lord. Please help us along the way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And you can be seated tonight. Let's sing How Great Thou Art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to
we just worship him this morning? Can we just say from our hearts, Lord, how great thou art this morning. Lord, I want to give you my all today, Lord. As Brother Jeremy said, Lord, surrendering my all, giving it all to you this morning. Father, I surrender it all because you are great in my life, Lord. Maybe you weren't great in the world's life, but you're great in my life. Oh, may we praise him this morning. Praise the Lord. Amen. We have some announcements here for the big tabernacle. It says, girls, gaga pit at 1 o'clock, softball, volleyball at 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. There's crafts in the cafe. There's pickleball in the concrete court, volleyball at the gym, 2 o'clock, and 2 o'clock basketball. And then 3 o'clock, hair clinic, girls volleyball in the gym. And then 3 o'clock, frisbee golf. And 4 o'clock is the choir. So if you don't remember all that, then you can come to me or Brother Doug, and we'll tell you after the service. Amen. We want to welcome the presence of the Lord. You want to make him welcome? You want to make him welcome? Amen. Let's all stand just before Brother Samuel would come. Let's sing that song, I Feel the Pool. I feel the pool.
have a pull towards the Lord Jesus Christ? Can you just raise your hand? Amen. The Bible says no man can come except the Father draws him. The Bible says that the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. So if you have a pull in your heart, in one place, Brother Random said, and I think it's the future home, Brother Random said, if you feel that little tingle in your heart, he said that that's that attribute of God that's down inside of you trying to express itself. So what we want to do this morning is just yield ourselves to the pull of the Holy Spirit, and it'll pull us right into the presence of God. Amen. How many love the Lord Jesus today? Would you just raise your hands? Amen. Praise the Lord. You all seem like a, such a great audience and so attentive this morning and worshiping. Thank you, William, for your help. Thank you, musicians. I appreciate all the musicians. And amen. I just appreciate Brother Jeremy's ministry. How many appreciate that? Can you just raise your hand and say, I appreciate Brother Jeremy and what he did to say to draw us closer to God. That's our desire is to draw closer to the Lord Jesus. When you leave the camp, if you're not closer to the Lord Jesus, then I feel like I failed as a minister and we as uh, counselors and, and leaders have failed because that's our desire is we can draw closer to the Lord Jesus. You know, there's only two forces in the world. There's God and Satan. And so everybody you meet, you want to try to push them towards the Lord Jesus. You want your life to be an influence, pushing people towards the Lord Jesus and get away from that mean old devil that destroys us, right? That old snake that keeps trying to hurt us. Amen. If you have your Bibles, I want to go over to Daniel, the first chapter. <clears throat> uh, it was good to see Brother Browning. I think he's going to be uh, speaking for us. Brother Samuel, Brother uh, Nathaniel Sias, I think his father was here as well. Brother Woosley and Brother Chad, I appreciate them laboring. Amen. Each one that's doing something for the Lord. Amen. We don't have much time to work for the Lord. We want to do all that we can for his kingdom. Amen. It's Daniel, the first chapter. <clears throat> I got a simple text today that I just uh, have in my heart. <clears throat> I was thinking about yesterday morning how we need to stop, we need to drop the bug. Remember that analogy, that, that, that bird that was trying to get the bug in the middle of the road and the bug and he waited and then the bug, the car, my truck got him and killed him. And also with the snake, how that that snake was just holding on to the saw and squeezing it and squeezing it and uh, it ended up killing the snake. So we, 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 thought that we ought to stop squeezing the saw. How many understand that analogy? You understand that there's things that hurt us in the past. We just somewhere got to let go of those things. Amen. Let's just bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, it's so good to be in your house today. We've dedicated this place to you, Lord, and to see the young people with their young, attentive minds, Lord, and Lord, just looking to you and have their Bibles to read. And I pray, God, that you would bless them today as as the word goes forth, Lord, may it lodge in our hearts, Lord, and may we be like a sponge and just absorb it, Lord. May we turn our cup up the right way that we might receive something, something from the Lord Jesus. Maybe write in our notebook a scripture, Lord. When we go home, we can pull it out and, and read something that will draw us closer to you, Father. Help us today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we're going to do a little bit of a Bible study today. If you've got notebooks, and I think all of you have got your Bibles, I want to just encourage you as a young man, you should always have a Bible, okay? If you don't have a Bible, see me or one of the ministers. We'll get you a Bible. This is your roadmap to heaven, okay? This is your roadmap to heaven. So you, there's a lot of voices in the world. They'll tell you this, this, but this is your roadmap to heaven. And I think I showed the picture, had Brother Branham up on the slide the other day, we had a prophet that came in our day, and he said, look, you all need to get back to the Bible. You all are baptizing in titles of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and, and many things, women cutting their hair and dressing immoral. He said, you all need to get back and read in your Bible. That's an abomination to God. And so we got in our Bible and found out what we believed are, is in the Bible. And that's what my job is as a minister, to get you back in your Bible. So if you don't have a Bible, you let us know. We'll get you a road map from, from earth to heaven. Amen. Daniel chapter 1, verse number 7. We're going to start here and read through this story a little bit. The Bible says in chapter 1, verse 7, Unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names. For he gave unto Daniel the name of Belteshazzar, and to Hananiah Sh Shadrach, and to Mishael, Mike, Mishael Meshach, and to Azariah Abednego. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meats and with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the princes of the eunuch that he might not defile himself. Now God brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuch. We're just going to maybe read a few verses. Go down to verse 17. I'll, I won't read through the whole story. Verse 17. And as for the four 
children. God gave knowledge and skill and all learning and wisdom, and Daniel had understanding in all the visions and dreams. Go to verse 20. And in all matters of wisdom and of understanding that the king re inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the musicians and astrologers that were in all his realm. And from this story, I just want to take a thought from verse number 8. The Bible says, Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. My thought is Daniel purposed in his heart. Purposed in hearts. You may be seated. <clears throat> As we take this thought this morning, I want us to just maybe go a little bit slow and get you something that you can just absorb. I found out that if I tell you a lot of things... You, sometimes you don't remember them, so I want to try to be brief this morning. Like a bucket, if you pour stuff in it, you keep dumping stuff, it just overflows and you don't retain it. So I just want you to kind of stay with me. Don't go on a little virtual journey somewhere and think about that boy or that girl. Just stay with me a little bit here and we'll kind of try to get through this. So our thought this morning is purposed in heart. Purposed in heart. And so we find that Daniel was a, a captive in a heathen nation. And these are not just stories, but the Bible says that everything that happened on the road map is an example for you when you go through your life and you encounter something. You go back to the road map and say, who else encountered this in their life? And then you just do what they do. All right? That's something you can write this down. You don't have to be really smart. Just do what smart people do. And so that's where you don't have to be a genius, just find a genius and do what they do. And so that's when you're in your walk with the Lord and you encounter something like I've never encountered that. Just go back in the Bible. The Bible says all this was written for an example. And so we find that Daniel was in a situation and I'm going to do what Daniel did. Is that fair? Is that, is that cheating? It's a little bit cheating that you don't, you're not original, but that's okay. We're not here to invent the wheel. We're just here to duplicate the wheel, as they say. So we find somebody that was successful. Here was Daniel. He was taken. He was uh, taken into a, a heathen nation. America once was a Christian nation, but now they are a heathen nation. A few years ago, we had a President Obama. He went 20 times, I think, on record around the world and said, America is no longer a Christian nation. So by that, if we're not a Christian nation, we're a heathen nation. So we find this story that Daniel was in, that we are in a very similar situation. And I want to encourage each one of you, as we go through this story, to realize this is not group therapy. I'm talking to you, that you have a road map, and you're on a journey. So I little, see little Christian uh, sitting there. How many enjoyed his ukulele playing last night? I was just amazed, like, wow, that's really amazing, Christian. So Christian is here. He's a young man. He's an individual. He has a road map. I've sat in hundreds and hundreds of camp uh, services, and sometimes the people around you, we think we're all going to be together forever, but that's not the case. You're going to go home, and the friends aren't going to be around you. So it's very important that you let God reveal himself to you personally, that you have an experience with your Bible, with the Word of God, so when you're all alone, that the Word of God speaks to you. We're going to find out about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Where's the brother whose name was uh, Meshach? Where's his, where is he in here? Where, where are you at? Raise your hand can't see him. They said he was in here. He was in here earlier. His name was Meshach. Is he in the other class? Okay. Well, he, I didn't know if he'd be in here or not. So I find that with Daniel, how he was taken into a human, uh, he was taken into a heathen uh, country, and it wasn't his fault. I want you to listen to me really closely here, because he was in this situation, not because of his own decisions, but because of somebody else's decisions. So his parents Maybe his uh, grandparents, maybe the rulers of Israel had backslidden and got away from God. And now Daniel was caught in a situation that he didn't want to be in, but he was in that situation. How many understand what I'm saying? You may have decided to get in a car with somebody and ride to camp, and they made a decision not to uh, rotate their tires or let their ball tires go bald. And then you have a blowout, and then you're sitting along the road, and now you're a victim of somebody else's decisions. And you're going to find out in life that you're going to be a victim many times of other people's decisions. And I want to encourage you not to take the victim mentality, but to just pick up wherever you are and say, I've got to go on. No matter what um, somebody else has done to me, I'm going to pick up and go on and be a Christian where I am. And that's what Daniel did. He didn't pick up the, the victim mentality. There's many people in the Bible you could think of. Think of Joseph, how his brothers hated him. They threw him into slavery. They threw him in the bottom of the pit. They went to Egypt. And he was there. He went to the top of the ladder, as so to speak, with Potiphar. And then uh, um, he got thrown back into the dungeon because the, Potiphar's wife asked him to do sexual immorality. He said, I'm not doing that. So he went all the way to the bottom. But the Bible says that God was with Joseph in the pit when he was down in the, in, in, in the prison. God was with him. And that's the main thing. If God is with you. 
And that's our desire today when we come to this youth campus to get all the world emptied out. As Brother Jeremy said, we're going to empty out. Let the Holy Spirit fill us. And if God be for us, no one can be against us. No weapon formed against you will ever prosper. And these are stories of young people who were put in a heathen nation that were all alone, but Christ was with them. God was with them, and they took a stand for God. And here's Daniel. He gets into a place, and he's in a culture. It's a new culture. It's a new language entirely. And he gets in that culture, and they start telling him, telling him what you're going to do. They said, look, you're going to drink the king's wine. You're going to drink the, eat the king's meat. And all of a sudden, Daniel felt in his heart that this was violating his conscience that he had in relationship he had with God. Now, this isn't an odd story because now we find that many times that we are encountering times in the natural where people are, our culture are drinking and they're smoking. And maybe they're not smoking cigarettes, but maybe they're vaping and maybe they're going to legalize marijuana here and, 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 the, and the smoking of it or putting it in their brownies or whatever they're going to do with these things. But somewhere in Daniel's heart, he purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. Does this, is this uh, something that we're dealing with in your, maybe your school? And I think is in Michigan, they've already legalized marijuana. They'll probably legalize it all over America as sin begins to progress and it begins to get darker and darker. <laughs> I don't know who's on the lights, but hey, maybe the Lord's doing things like that. You know, the Holy Spirit moves in different ways, in odd ways. God can can take things. I remember I was in Flagstaff, Arizona, and preaching at one of the conventions, and they had the windows open. We got to preaching along about the day of Pentecost, and there was a rushing mighty wind that came through the building. And just when we did begin to preach about that, the wind came through the building and blew the all the, the uh, music off the piano, just blew it off across the room. Amen. God works in supernatural ways. Do you believe that today? God is a supernatural God. He can make himself real to you when nobody else is around you and nobody is feeling what you're feeling. God can make himself real to you in a way that only you know. Amen. But God is not a vague God. He's a God that's very specific to your situation. Even in this camp, there should have been things in your life that nobody knows, but the Holy Spirit, when you come into this camp, that the Holy Spirit discerns it and he starts going down in your life. Amen. Some people, they just want religion, which is a covering. It just covers. We don't want a religion. We want to know God in the power of his resurrection. That's what Paul said, that I might know him in the power of his resurrection. But that's not all of the verse. And it says to fellowship with him in his sufferings. So there's a suffering. There's a cross that you're going to have to bear to be a Christian. And that's what Daniel began to realize, that he wasn't going to become a part of the king's meat and the king's drink because he had been taught about Jehovah. He was taught about Jehovah who opened the Red Sea and brought his people out. He was taught about the God who opened the the Jordan River and they walked across on dry land. He was taught about the miracles that God had done among his nation. He knew there was a God. He knew that God was a reality. And we want you to experience God at this youth camp. When you go away and there's people say, there is no God, you can say, no, there is a God. I was in God's presence, and God discerned my life, and I saw God changing lives and changing me. That's the greatest miracle I've seen in my life is that God could change me. As I said the other day, I was not a good person. I was not going in the right direction. The devil had a hold on me because there's a law. There's a, a law. Uh, it's, it's called, a, how's the Bible say, inside of us is a law of sin. So if I have this, there's a law called gravity. That is this going to go up or down when I let go of it? Down. Because there's a law called gravity. When you're born, you have a law of an old nature. So that old nature, it flows to the lowest point. It's a sinful nature that's inside of us. That's why every one of us had, must be born again. Sometimes people are like, oh, you're cussing or you're doing this. That's your old nature. And when you do that, you realize, I've got to be born again. I realized at a young age, I was 15 years old, I realized, I can't keep doing this. I am going in the wrong direction. The Bible says, whatsoever you do, do with all your might. And if I'm going to be a sinner, I'm going to be a really good sinner, which means I'll be a very bad, bad person. And I don't want to go that way. You young men are sitting here. You have your sound minds. You're listening to me. Five years from now, if the Lord tarries, you'll be out in the world. You'll have the whole world in front of you. I want to encourage you now in the presence of God to make the right decision, to serve the Lord Jesus, to live eternally. The Bible says on the last day, young men will have a vision and they can see down the road. I don't have, how they say the one thing better than learning from your mistakes is learn from somebody else's mistakes. 
I see somebody went down that road, and man, they fell off the wagon. Their life's a mess. Even people, they did make a decision to, they said, well, I don't believe that prophet that was on the screen. I don't believe it. And we should live long enough to watch people that go down that path, and pretty soon the women start cutting their hair and wearing shorts, and, and the men start cussing and drinking, and they stop going to church. Or maybe they go to a church where they baptize in Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, which nobody in the Bible was ever baptized in the titles of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. How many know your Bible? You know that. So I say, I'm not really smart, but I know the Bible. I know the roadmap. I know this is the road. Just like if I'm walking up this aisle, I got to, got to go down that path to get to here. And if I need to go to heaven, they ask Peter, how can we be saved? He said, first, you got to repent. You got to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And you shall be filled with the power and the life of Jesus Christ. So if someone's not been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, they've never been baptized at all, which means their sins have not been remitted. And I want to have my sins remitted. I want them to be under the blood. I'm going to encourage you here today, if you've never been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Mark 16, I believe it's verse 16, says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. So the first, uh, first um, uh, step in salvation is to repent of your sins. Lord, I'm a sinner. I know I'm a person that's bad. I know I'm going in a wrong direction. I know, as Brother Daniel held that up, if I, if, you just, if I get away from my mom and dad and my parents, I'll just go in a bad direction. That's natural. You need to be born again. You need a supernatural experience with God. It can change your life and change your desires. John said, I baptize you with water, but there's one coming after me that will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. There's a fire of the Holy Ghost that will burn the desires out of your life. This is just not a theory or something we read in the book somewhere. It's something that you experience. You come into the presence of God and God burns the desires to live immoral. God burns the desire out of you to be involved in pornography and bad music and movie. God burns that out of you and your desires change. And that's what the presence of God is all about. And that's what we say if you're in the presence of God. Say, Lord, I know that thing is still alive. I want to encourage you to stay in the presence of God because I'm here to tell you it works. It's a reality. We've got counselors here that have been here 20, 30. This is my 40th year that I've been coming to this camp. I'm not a dinosaur. I might look like it, but, you know, um, you know, but when you see something that's good, like, hey, that's good. That's good. I want what those people have. I'm not really smart, but I'm going to do what those people did. I'm going to dwell in the presence of God and let God burn these desires out of me. As David said, Lord, create in me a clean heart. Lord, renew a right spirit inside of me. That's Psalms 51. Let me tell you this. This was right after David committed adultery. And David knew that he had to repent. Go back and it looks at, uh, was it uh, Nathan the prophet knocked on his door and the Holy Spirit came and found him. And the Holy Spirit will come and find you. You might think you hide or do something. You hide it. But the Holy Spirit is a discerner. He looks through all of our lives. None of that's in my notes, but I pray that it helps us somehow. You know, and in Daniel's day, he was dealing with natural things. But in, we find in our generation, a lot of things that we're dealing with are virtual things. They're virtual, like they talk about the virtual world and the internet, and many times people are working at home, and the tree of good and evil, they, they can glean the good out of it, maybe work from home and have a job, work remotely, but the evils many times are, are, are there's great, great evils that happen with that. So we see as Daniel wouldn't partake of the natural diet, now there's a group of people that refrain and said, I refuse to defile myself with a virtual diet that people try to absorb. I think during the pandemic they said that the natural adult the, the, the normal adult consumes eight hours of media on the internet, looking at social media or, or movies or something, just soaking it in because there's a thirst inside of us. And so there's a natural thirst. And, and, and so Daniel was saying, look, I'm not going to partake of the world and my culture's things that they're putting out there for me to feed on. I want you to listen to me and listen to the things, the corrupt music and the evil movies and the violent video games and the pornography and the celebrity websites and the adulterous life and all those things. So you, you must purpose in your heart, I'm not going to defile myself. I mean, that's why you need the Holy Spirit. He'll teach you. There's so many things. I can't sit up here and say, okay, don't go to this website and don't go to this website. and don't go. There's not a list. We don't have enough room on the walls to write this stuff. So what I need to do is put the Holy Spirit inside every one of you. And the Bible says he will teach you. He will guide you. And he, 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 will, he will guide your life when you're in something and you're maybe you're looking at something and you're watching. Maybe your school says, like, hey, you need to watch this. And so you're watching it and then all of a sudden something else comes up. And how many have gone to YouTube maybe to try to fix a radiator in your car? And all of a sudden you, you go somewhere else and pretty soon you're like, how did I get here? 
how did I even get here? So the internet is a road. It's a virtual road. And people go, and many times you find yourself in places, and the Holy Spirit will be like, get away from that. Don't go down that road. And that's where Daniel, he purposed in his heart that he wasn't going to defile himself. How many know what I'm saying today? We live in a real world, and the gospel is a real gospel that will go with you. He said, I'll never leave you, and I'll never forsake you. That's the God that we need. Remember Peter? He walked with Jesus for three and a half years. He walked on waters. He, he cast out devils. He fed 5,000, helped them pass it all out, but he still denied Christ. There's something more than being with ministers. We could take, man, we take Brother uh, uh, Samuel Browning or Brother Jeremy and handcuff him to every one of us. Like, all right, you go with us, and you'd be with them three and a half years, and still you would deny Christ. We need something more than that. Peter needed the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He needed the Holy Ghost and fire down inside of him that would give him a power to be a testimony for Christ. And that's what we're here to tell you, not about a theory, about a reality that we've seen in our lives. The Brother Seaver and Brother Doug and the different ones, they're time-tested memorials time-tested memorials i was thinking about that if you have your bibles we're going to turn to several scriptures uh first john chapter two this is your road map all right we're going to read it you should mark in your bible and take notes in your bible in my bible in the front and the back i write testimonies miracles that god has done in my life and i've got pages and pages and pages of miracles things god's done in my life first john chapter two verse 15 the bible says love not the world if you have a Schofield Bible, it's got a little B there, and it goes to cosmos, which means world order. It doesn't mean trees and flowers and mountains and streams. That's not what it's talking about. It's talking about the world, the cosmos, and the, the way of the movies, and the ways of the music, and the way of all the fashions of the world. If you love those things, cosmos, the world order, if you love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, if any man love the world, the love of God is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. The world passes away, the cosmos, the world order will pass away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So we want to be those that abide in Christ, amen, and that we do the will of God. Back to our story. I was thinking of Daniel and how the, the Bible says he refused to partake of the king's meats. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were with him. And the Bible, as we read in those verses, they tried them for 10 days. They just gave them a little bit of pulse. And they found that they were fairer and wiser than the Babylonians. Our story here we read, it said they were 10 times wiser than all of those around them. I want you to notice as we read in verse 9, the Bible says God brought Daniel into favor. It wasn't Daniel's abilities. God now was, Daniel was standing for God and God was saying, look, I'll impart to you, Daniel, something that will elevate you 10 times greater than the people that are around you. He goes on to say, God gave them knowledge and skill and all learning and wisdom. Is that what your roadmap says? Now, God is no respecter of persons. You just do what those people did, and God will bless your life in many ways. Amen. You may not have a lot of money or may not be intelligent, but you'll have a sound mind. The Bible says, let the mind that was in Christ, let it be inside of you. Young men. That's why girls, they, the Bible says in the, in the Proverbs, there's that the, the, the adulterous woman seeks for the precious, precious life. So you young men, as you purpose in your heart to serve God, you're, you're going to be able to talk in complete sentences. You're not going to have a tattoo of your mama on the side of your face or mama tattoo on your shoulder you're going to be able not be on drugs and be able to carry on a conversation and the bible says the adulterous woman will look you out and try to find you because she's trying to find somebody that can provide for her and she knows that those other people that can't talk and they can't show up i'll just say this i think i said it last year it's just part of being in business working with staffing companies they say if you can show up every day for work and pass a drug test you're above 80 percent of the workforce in america you just got to show up every day and pass a drug test and so what I'm telling you, this gospel of Jesus Christ, not only is going to help you spiritually and eternally, eternally, it's going to help you naturally in your life that you're 10 times better than the people around you. And you ladies would want a guy like that, right? You don't want a guy that, that comes home every other day and can't talk in sentences and he wants to go get a fish hook tattooed on his ankle. It's like, no, I don't want that. I want a real man, a man of God that leads my family and takes us to church and love God with all of his heart. That's what we're trying to get these young men to. And you young ladies would say, hey, I'd, I'd like to have a, a help a man like that. <laughs> Amen. We're going to talk about several scriptures here. Daniel purposed in his heart. I want you to notice this because the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Now, the world tells you you think with your brain. You reason with your brain, but you think from your heart. That's what the Bible says in Proverbs 23, 7. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. There's another verse that says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth begins to speak. 
Proverbs says this, Proverbs 4, verse 23 says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of the heart are, issue, are the issues of life. So it's out of your heart. You have to, you've ever heard, ever heard the thing, guard your life, guard your heart? You have to guard your heart, for out of your heart issues the, 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 the things of life. And that's what Daniel is doing. He purposed in his heart. Now, I want you to understand that this is just not purposing in your mind. It's just not mind over matter, or I'm going to do, because remember, um, was it Peter? Remember when he, Jesus said, I've got to go be crucified, and Peter purposed in his mind, Lord, you're not going to go, and I'll give my life. You're not going to go up there and give your life. I'll give my life. And the Bible says all the other disciples, they purposed in their mind that they were not going to forsake Jesus, but within 24 hours, circumstances around them, their culture around them, caused them to deny Jesus Christ. How many understand that? It's not purposing in your mind. We can think something and even agree with the Word of God, but it takes something in your heart. And that's what we're trying to get you to, down in your heart as a man thinketh in his heart. And that's where times you spend in prayer. And remember Jesus, as we were talking about the other day, it wasn't when he was, they were about to say, we're going to drive nails in your hand. Jesus said, no, 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 I don't want to be crucified. That wasn't the time he made the decision. He made the decision way back when he was all alone. He was kneeling at a place of prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. That's what this altar is. It's a place where things die. And you come and we talk about things and you and God begins to deal with you in a supernatural way. We're not maybe running around and jumping into it. But God is now speaking to you in a real way and saying, look, I want to transform you by the renewing of your mind. I, wanna, I don't want you to be conformed. Remember the little bush if it was alive. And, and you cut all those things. I want you to be conformed. Formed, amen, not to the world, but I want you to be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you're a son and daughter of God made in the image of God. Now, if you don't purpose in your heart, I'm a child of God, I'm a son of God, I'm a daughter of God, then you'll begin to conform to the world. I was looking the other day, I was walking through, and this lady had a nose ring in her, in her nose, and this other man, he had, you know, it's just become common. People become piercing or they get tattoos. It's because they don't have an identity that's sufficient enough for them, so they have to go identify with something else to gain um, identity. They feel everybody wants to be bigger than something, a part of something that's bigger than them. And that's not bad. It's just, it's, it's an insecurity, and we have those as young people. We have those. All of us do. And so they, people go get a marking, whether it's of a, a basketball player or a football play, player or a beauty queen. They get a little tattoo or they get a, a little belly ring or they something, and they've seen something, and they want to identify with that. Well, they want to get a tattoo they want. And so that's why when we come away from this and we can see clearly the Bible, the Bible says young men in the last days will have a vision and you see the Bible. I see a group of people. I see a bride without spot or wrinkle. I want to be a part of that bride. And you begin to be identified that by the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. Say, Lord, I want to be identified with that group of people. Well, Peter, he purposed in his mind he wasn't going to do it and he couldn't do it. Bow up and down. His life was up and down like a yo-yo. But Jesus said, you go tarry in the city of Jerusalem. You go Go find a place to, and get alone with God because I'm going to send the Holy Ghost and you'll be endued with a power from on high. It's a reality. There's a power that will come inside of you that will cause you to live an overcoming life. Not you, but that power has the power. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. It's not in your mind. We can say that and I can, we can, greater is he, and we can sing the song. But it's something more than that. It's the power of the Holy Spirit living inside of you. you say, Brother Daniel, I, I, I can't do that. I, I just, I I, I've tried. I can't do it. Hey, you're right where God wants you. You are God, right where God wants you. God wants you to get to the place you say, I can't do this. That's where I got to as a 15-year-old boy. I said, God, I, I can't do this. I'm a preacher's kid, and I was raised in the Branham Tabernacle. We went in this very room where the seals were revealed, and the pillar of fire came down and drew this the, the church ages on the wall, something greater that Dr. Larkin didn't have. That's a whole other subject. But God, the super, and I couldn't live a life until something came inside of me. But I'm here to tell you it's a reality of Jesus Christ. And he'll go with you no matter where you go or what you do. He'll go with you. and He'll guide your life. Amen. When you go through dark times and those heartaches and pains and you don't feel like going to church and you don't feel like talking to those people anymore, something will lead you. Something, a power will rise up inside you and it will carry you and it will guide you through your life. And there will be nothing that could ever come against you that can defeat you. Amen. Because there's greater is he that is inside of you than he that is in the world. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. How many has experienced in their life? Amen. Say, I've experienced the power of the Holy Spirit. It's there for us. We just got to, amen, lay in God's presence till it becomes a part of us. And we become one with Jesus Christ. 
Amen. Some of us just need to drop the bug. Need to drop that thing and get away from the things of the world and the love of the world. Say, Lord, take this love of the world out of me. Or maybe we need to stop squeezing the saw. I've got my saw right here. I still got it up here. Nice shiny saw. And we got to find my snake. <laughs> it's not, not in there. Has anybody seen my snake? No? Seen it? It's in here, maybe. Ah. Come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. Hey, hey, there you are. Come on. Come on, get out of there. Yeah, there's our snake. How many like snakes? I don't like, you like snakes? <laughs> here, I don't like snakes. This thing, it, it's a, it's life, you know, this little guy. I remember our story yesterday. He was going through life, and he ran over a saw, and he, that saw hurt him, and he was not just going to go on his life and just continue on to another flower and hide in it. But that saw hurt him, and he wrapped himself around that saw, and he was going to squeeze that saw because that saw did him wrong. And he squeezed and squeezed, as we said yesterday, until the life went out of the snake. And if he had just passed by that saw that hurt in his life and just went on, he'd have just been really nice and have been over here. It's all the way up here, sister, so it won't get you. That one sister said she was scared of that snake. We'll just leave him over there. He's just a rubber snake. May it be a reality when you go through something life. Remember Jesus said, the words that I've spoken to you, the Holy Spirit will bring them to you. Remember it. Somewhere in you're out there and you're squeezing and somebody says, hey, stop squeezing the saw. Stop squeezing that situation. Stop. That thing hurt you, I know, 10 years ago, but don't let it affect you now. Just move on. Like Daniel could have said, look, I'm just a victim. I'm here, but I'm a victim. No, he didn't. He decided he was going to serve God. He heard the word of God. He purposed in his heart he was not going to defile himself. Go to Hebrews chapter 11. This is the faith chapter, Hebrews, the hall of fame. Here was a great man called Moses. He was going to be the next Pharaoh of Egypt. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 23. The Bible says, By faith Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. And by faith, faith is a revelation. Faith is a revelation. A revelation. Faith comes by hearing. When you're hearing the word of God, maybe you come in this like, ah, I was just a polywog and I, I believe in evolution. I, but when God begins to speak to you and says, no, uh, as we read in Colossians, God created you were created by God and for God. And God has a purpose in your life. As we said, why would you let a suicide spirit come over you once you receive a, a revelation that God has called you into the world? He's called you for a purpose. He wants to fill you with the Holy Ghost and give you power over all the power of the devil devil so when you have that god has in, he will empower you with the holy spirit and this is this is moses even without the holy spirit but he had a revelation verse 24 by revelation moses when he came to the years refused to be called the son of pharaoh's daughter daughter choosing and that's the thing that's where every one of you as young people maybe your mom and dad made you come to camp but you come to a place where you choose and that's where moses came and i tell you all predestinated sons and daughters of god they come to that place and they choose god they choose what's right Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Now somebody comes along and says, oh, the sin, there's no pleasure in sin. That's not what the Bible says. All right, now I know you get those old sticks in the mud like, there's no pleasure in sin. When you say, no, that's not what the roadmap said. Amen. Is that what your Bible said? The Bible says there is pleasure in sin. We're not here to sugarcoat Christianity. We're here to point you to the reality of Christianity. The Bible says there's pleasure in sin. But you must notice it's only for a season. Remember the prodigal son, he said, he, the two sons they had, they sat in youth camp and they had everything. And the one said, I want all the, I, I want to take my, my heritage and I want to go. I have a sound mind, I'm not tattooed. I can, and he was very prosperous, so he went out in the world, listen to me. But something unexpected happened in his life. There was a famine that happened to him, something that he hadn't planned on. Listen to me, somewhere there's something the devil has a plan. It might be a car wreck. It might be a venereal disease somewhere you didn't plan on that. And all of a sudden it come and this man had a lot pretty soon was sitting in, in a place that he, a famine came. And now he's there and he's eating the husk of the pigs. But oh, praise God as a son and daughter of God. He said, you know what? I'll arise and I'll go back to my father's house. You might be there today and you've made a choice and to go down a path. God's not going to leave you alone because I'm going to tell you what. If you're a predestinated seed of God, God's going to find you. Remember Samson? God told Samson, we can do this the easy way or the hard way. And Samson had a problem. Does anybody know what that problem was? He loved women. All right? And he had a problem. It's not bad to love women, but have it in its place. Love the Lord thy God with all 
And then love, God will give you a, a wife. And you young men are looking for a wife. And that's a good thing to look for. The Bible says, he that hath found a wife hath found favor with God. I was a young person. I surrendered my heart to God as a young age, 15 years old. At 19 years old, somewhere I found favor with God. And God gave me a beautiful, wonderful wife. We've been married, I think, 35 years. And, and God gave me a great helpmate. I was, it was, it's a miracle at 15 years old and 16 and 17. But what was it at times at the altar? I spent at the altar. And I see some of you going the same path I was, spending time at the altar, praying, say, God, I just don't want to be one of 7 billion people in the world, and half of those are male. There's 3.5 billion people that are just out here. But, Lord, I want to be a son of God. Lord, I want you to direct my life and orchestrate my life, and I want you to have a purpose in my life. That's why people, they, they take their life because they have no purpose. But when you come to God and God fills you with the Holy Ghost and he gives you a purpose to live for him, you are God's ambassadors. Amen. That's why, listen to me. I know we're a little bit off my notes. That's why we don't believe in drinking and smoking and taking drugs, because you're an ambassador of Jesus Christ. Listen to me. I don't have a lot in this world. We have a little business, and I help at the church and do a few things. But listen to me. I don't have, I don't have five minutes in my life where I can become inebriated to I can say some that, something that doesn't matter to the people that hear it. So if I have a few employees, and I said, look, why don't you all just take off the rest of the year? I can't say that because I, 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 our little business would go out. Or I go to church, like, oh, it doesn't matter about the Bible. It's, if I was a Nebra, how many understand what I'm saying? I'm a Nebra, oh, it does this, forget the Bible. I can't say that. So there's no place in my life that I can take the chance to be inebriated for five minutes or be under the influence of drugs or alcohol. How many understand that? Why? Because we're ambassadors for God. And that's what God wants you to be an example for God. Like, hey, I don't have any place that I can put on an immoral dress and go out in public because I am an ambassador for Christ. The Bible says, let a woman be dressed in modest apparel. Is that what the road map says? Amen. Well, I, I'll just break that. I'll just break that. It doesn't matter. Well, uh, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. We got in trouble when Eve did that. She broke a word in God's, and that's why we have every siren. That's why we have every graveyard. That's why we every, have every sick baby. That's why we have every cancer case because somebody broke the word of God. And so we learn from that. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. We're covering a lot of territory, but you all are staying with me. All right, verse number 27. By faith he forsook Egypt, which is the world, not fearing the wrath of the king. For he endured, seeing him who was invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of the blood, lest he, should, he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea, by dry line, land with the Egyptians are saying to do were drowned. So we're looking at these men that made the right choice, men that purposed in their heart and how God was with them and how he changed them. And I was thinking about that, how that um, even, uh, let's think about Lot and Abraham. Remember Lot, the Bible says it's an amazing, we don't have time to preach it, but the Bible says that Lot pitched his tent towards Sodom. In other words, every day when he woke up, he opened the doors and went right out to Sodom. That's why I think of a Microsoft browser that comes up and it has all those stories, the latest news stories. I hate that thing. I try to turn that off because it, it, it was pitching your, your, your tent, your door, your window towards all the things of the world. You don't want to do that. When you get up in the morning, you need to read your Bible and pray. Before you go down the virtual road and get on that road and go out there and travel, around, get your Bible and read the road map and say, Lord, what would you have me to do today? And pray to your Father. Say, Lord, what would you have me to do today? Remember Paul when he struck down by the pillar of fire that he was laying in the dust? He said, Lord, what would you have me to do? And that's what each one of us say, Lord, what would you have me to do? And let the Holy Spirit deal in your life. Let the supernatural pillar of fire. Remember, that's what happened on the day of Pentecost. I don't know how to... You remember that picture I showed of Brother Branham, the pillar of fire Brother Branham showed? That was the logos of God that led the children of Israel through Egypt, out of Egypt, and led them to the promised land. When Paul was struck down by the pillar of fire, there was a light. How many know the story? He said, who are you, Lord? He said, I am Jesus. That pillar of fire was the pillar of fire. And on the day of Pentecost, that pillar of fire came and broke up. Uh, you see, ministers know it. it was cloven tongues, questions and answers on the Holy Ghost, Brother Branham. It was broke up, and it came on every one of them. And the Holy Ghost, that same pillar of fire, will come into this room, and it will rest on you. You, and it begins to influence you. Maybe you're there in your seat and something moves over and you raise your hand and tears come to your eyes and all of a sudden it's the influence from another realm. It's the Holy Ghost that's wanting to baptize you with his spirit and give you a power, not just to influence you and be a rain, but something that comes inside of you and causes you to grow and live a powerful life. 
It's the power of the Holy Spirit. I was reading it over in Acts so many. I thought, man, there's so many things I want to preach. But in the Acts, in Acts 2, amen, and, 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 and they were baptized with the Holy Ghost. Acts 4, they came and they beat them and said, look, you can't preach in this name. And they threatened them. You can't preach anymore. And the Bible says they were refilled with the Holy Ghost. They went back and had a prayer meeting. And that power came back inside of them. And the Bible says, the Bible says they spoke with boldness. We need this power of the Holy Ghost in our life. We could go through Acts 10. While Peter preached preach the word, this Holy Spirit began to fall in the people. Acts 19, they said, we don't even know if there's a Holy Ghost. Some people, they go to church like, I don't even know about the Holy Ghost. That's why you live a life that's up and down. Your family lives a life that's up and down. Maybe your preacher lives a life that's up and down. You need the Holy Ghost. There's only one thing that's the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's Jesus Christ. And in the form of the Holy Ghost, remember Peter... Paul looked up and said, who are you? He said, I'm Jesus. It was the pillar of fire. And God wants that pillar of fire to live inside of you and give you a strength. Whether God tarries 10 years or 5 years or 20 years down the road, you'll have a consistent life. Not one that's up and down in church, out of church, in church, out of church, singing those songs in the gutter. Now I'm out of the gutter, in the gutter, out of the gutter. No, you'd be like Fanny Crosby. Amen. I shall know him. I shall know him as redeemed by his side. I shall stand. And that's what we as young people want. We don't want to see a yo-yo Christian. We want to see something that's consistent. I want to see something that's solid. When I come up here and lay my, my iPad down or my Bible down here, I, I'll lay it down. I want it to be consistent and it lays on there. If I come over and try to lay it and then it, it's not there and it just falls to the floor, like that's not consistent. And that's what we as young people want to be. Amen. We want to be consistent. We want to see Christians. Now, if your parents would sit in here, I would tell your parents, I look, you need to be a consistent. When Sunday comes, you go to church, right? My boy said, are we going to church today? I said, did the sun come up? Yes, the sun came up. And yes, we're going to church. The Bible says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. That's the Bible, right? I know we got all kinds of spirits around our message that say, don't go to church, but just get your road map. It's really not rocket science. It's just road map. Read over in Hebrews. The Bible says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. He didn't say, I was glad when they said, let us log into the house of the Lord. He said, let us go into the house of the Lord. The Bible says they shall lay hands on the sick. Not virtual hands, physical hands. They'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Young people, I'm here to tell you, people change, doctrines change, churches change, but the road map, the absolute, will not change. It's the Word of God. And that's what we're trying to get you established in the Word of God. I'm not trying to get you established in Brother Daniel or Brother Daniel's ministry. And the brothers, are, they're trying to get you established in Jesus Christ, in the Word of God. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. I was thinking about this, a, a young lady that's purposed in her heart that she's not going to be turned by the fashions. I think I read this last year, but it's worth reading. Again, I found it in my notes. This was written by a 19-year-old boy at this camp looking around for a girl. And he wrote this. He said, I think when a girl wears a tight dress, a, a, a skirt or shirt that's tight, if it, it turns off a real son of God, it, it shows a lack of character. The more I grow in the Lord, the more I realize what Brother Branham said. Look for character, and then if you love her, is nothing but the truth. If a girl shows her body before we are married, she will show it after we are married to other men. I'm not interested in having a girl with the perfect body type. I'm interested in a girl that is filled with the Holy Ghost. Wow, this is amazing, isn't it? <laughs> Amen. Interested in a girl that's filled with the Holy Ghost. That's what we want men full of the Holy Ghost that has the right desires in their life. Amen. Here he goes on to say, he said, I'm interested in a girl that is filled with the Holy Ghost who will be a real genuine wife to me and a mother to my children. Amen. That's what, we're men, that's what men are looking for. That's what Holy Ghost filled men are looking for. But the devil will come and tell you, look, if you'll dress and wear your dress of two sizes smaller or your skirt or put a big split, split up the side of it, more, not boys will look at you. And yeah, they will look at you. But it won't be the right kind of boys that will be attracted to you. You want a Holy Ghost filled boy. You want a boy that has a purpose in his life. Not you say, hey, it's Sunday. Are we going to church? Oh, I don't know if we're going to go. I don't, I, don't, I don't know. Wait, wait. Did the baby cough? Yeah, the baby coughed. Oh, we're not going. The baby's sick. We're not going. We want real men of God that say we're going to the house of God. And man, the Bible says he that overcometh will be a pillar in the house of God. He'll be something that the church rests on. And that's what we need, men of God. And I believe they're here, men of God. Amen. It's getting dark in the world, but amen. We want the light of the Holy Ghost to burn in our hearts. It's getting dark more and more all around us. We're going to talk about some things about being purposed in our heart. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Is this okay? It's all the Bible. 
2 Corinthians chapter 6. The Bible ta talks about coming out from the world and being separated. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. I know if I stay in the Bible, I'll be safe. There's a lot of doctrines in the world, but you just stay with your Bible and you're going to be okay. All right? 2 Corinthians chapter 6. The Bible says, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Now, that one scripture will keep you from ever marrying an unbeliever. Amen. If you'll just take that scripture. Now, you say, well, I'm going to break that scripture. You can do the. Listen to me. You can break the scripture, but there's a lot of heartache and pain and suffering that goes with it. Oh, God can forgive you. Yes, God can forgive you, but your life will be hell on earth married to an unbeliever where you're trying to get that guy up and drag him and then you have children and he, he wants to take him to a, 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 a ball game or a drink beer and do those things out in the world and you're trying to get him to go to church. So the Bible is telling you as you're young people, you're sitting here like Moses really to make a choice. Say The Bible says, be not unequally yoked with an unbeliever for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? What communion hath light with darkness? What concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? What agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. You are the temple. Not just this building, but you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. That's what the Bible says. Of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. I will be their God and they will be my people. Amen. Is God going to let his people be destroyed? No. God is going to sustain his people. God is going to help his people. When they get in trouble, God is coming to help his people. I want to be one of his people. I don't want to be on the wrong side. I want to be with God's people. How many want to be with God's people? I don't want to be on the other side. You all are so attentive and listening, so good, and turning in your Bibles. I, I love that. The Bible says, I go on to say in verse 17, Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, Touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and I will be a father unto you. This is God in letter form. And maybe you don't have a father. I had a great godly father. Maybe you don't have that. Maybe God didn't bless you. Maybe, let me say this, maybe the decisions of somebody else brought you to the place like Daniel that you're in this place and you don't have a father. Maybe you don't have a godly mother that's with you. But God said, if you'll come separate from the world and you'll seek me and you'll pray with me and you'll talk to me, he said, I will be your father. Amen. He said he would be a father to the fatherless. You might be here. Maybe you never had anybody that loved you, but God loves you. And God will take care of you and you will feel the, the love of a godly parent. And God is the spirit. St. John chapter 4. You feel that real timidness? That's the Holy Spirit. If you'll just get away from and just... Get alone with God. Maybe we, at the end of the service, we just kind of close and people pray. It's kind of your service. You just go. But if God deals with you and says, I don't have a father. I don't have anybody that loves me. I don't have anybody that cares about me. You know, I don't know if you all have curfews. Every family is a little bit different. So when your father calls you or your mother, they call you because not because they don't like you. It's because they love you. Maybe, I don't know what it is now, $200,000 to raise a child. If I had a, an asset that was $200,000, I would want to know everywhere it was. Quite frankly, the technology wasn't then, but I'd be tracking that thing everywhere it went. So if you all have parents and they want to track everywhere you go, it's because, not because they don't like you. It's because they believe you have value and they care about you. There's some girls that don't have a daddy that calls them. It's 10 o'clock or 11 or 12 and nobody calls them. Like, hey, I'll just... I have a friend, she moved out of home at 17 years old, and she moved out. And I, I just about had a panic attack. I'm like, hey, you're a minor. You're coming. If she, I don't have a girl, but it, like, you're coming to my house because you're a minor, and the law says you have to stay with me and I, because I would love you and take care of you and want to protect you from the evils that are in the world. And maybe you don't have that, but there is a God. He said, I'll be your father, and I will love you, and I will care for you, and I will protect you, and I will keep you safe as long as you obey me and hear my word. Isn't that wonderful to have a God like that? Maybe you've, got, maybe you've been through a situation our culture's brought to you that you don't have that, but God wants to be that to every one of you. He wants to be a provider for you, not only uh, spiritually and physically. What was it that David said? I was once young, now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. I've never seen this righteous begging for bread, never seen a you know, homeless with food. Like, no, God's going to take care of his children. I want to serve a God like that. I don't know what's coming. I don't know. We had some people, they said, from Ukraine. They bombed their whole city. I don't know if they bombed their town. They came over here. I think they're in this camp, they said. And our nation could very easily, we're going to get to some of that in just a minute. Our easily company could, country could very easily come to that. But as long as I have my heavenly father with me, 
It doesn't matter what happens because he said, Daniel, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll be your father. I'll be your provider. I will protect you. And if God be for me, who could ever be against me? The Bible says what no weapon formed against you, Daniel, will ever prosper. That's the God that we serve. I want to be on his side. And when I sin and I separate, that's what sin does. It separates you from fellowship with the great creator, from your protector, from the one that loves you. And I tell you, when you sin, you make a mistake, there ought to be a panic mode. It's like being in a raft. Anybody out, ever been out in a raft with air in it? And then you, get, you hear that terrible, terrible thing, Brother Chad, you go like, and all of a sudden, it's panic. If you're out in the ocean and there's sharks in the water, all of a sudden, you start panicking because you know if the air goes out of the thing that's sustaining you, you're out there with the sharks and you're about to be devoured. And that's the way your Christian life is with God. If you ever have a hole punched in your spiritual relationship with God and you begin to hear this, that's the warning of the Holy Spirit. It says, I'm leaving you. I'm departing from you. Amen. I think it was Moses said, Lord, if you don't go with us, we're not going into this battle. Amen. Somewhere we need to patch the hole. Amen. Where the Holy Spirit is leaking out of us. Whether it's movies or video games or whatever it is, it might be a relationship with a friend. And say, Lord, I, when I get around that person, I feel the Holy Spirit draining out of me. It's just like God is just leaving me and God walks away from me. And I feel like God, it's like, hey, God is a person. But the Ram talks about that he, Christ is a person. You accept Christ as a person. You accept his word. Actually, he tells us that's the evidence that you have the Holy Spirit is you believe all of his word and you accept his word. So if there's something inside you that doesn't believe the word of God, say, Lord, take that out of me. Take it out of me, whatever that is, Lord, because I want you to have the preeminence in my life. I want you to be the ruler, the Lord. We sing that long song, he is Lord. That means ruler. He's the ruler of our life. All right, going through many things. I want to talk about this LG BT movement. You say, why would you talk about that at church? Because the devil's talking about it. Why can't we talk about it? I learned more about the facts of life and things of God and, and, the, and, and the, uh, you know, the birds and the bees and the house of the Lord. Brother Ram preaches the message marriage and divorce and choosing a bride and the invisible union. I hear the facts of life and I hear it straight. I hear it right. I don't want to learn it in the back seat of a car somewhere. I want to hear it right from the house of God. So we hear the, this LGBT movement and how perverted the lesbian, gay, and bisexual, and transgender. And we're just going to talk about that. Because God wants you to purpose in your heart that you're, if you're a man, he wants you to purpose that you're a man. If you're a female, he wants you to purpose in your heart today that you're a female. He doesn't want to wait till you get out there and there's perverted spirits all roaming around and you're at some trade show or you're listening to some music or you're here. And then make a decision. If you're a brother, am I a male? Or if you're a sister, am I a female? But God wants you in his presence to let the Holy Spirit empower you to say, I'm a man made in the image of God. I'm a sister made in the image of God to be a reflection of Jesus Christ in this day. And I'll tell you this, our, our world has gone insane. It's insane. So if I told you, um, I've got this handkerchief, I'm going to drop it. And you say, oh, it's going to float. It's going to float. Like, no, there's a law called gravity. It's going to fall down. That's science, right? It's just science. I'm here to tell you in the house of the Lord that there's science that says there's only two gender. One is male, one is female. That's science. I think even one of the greatest, I forget that man's name, he's one of the greatest atheists, and he said he differs with all the LG. He said it's nonsense. He said, I don't even believe in God, but this is science. There's only two genders, male and female. I know we're down in the weeds, but let's stay in the weeds because God will be a God in the weeds just as well as he will on the mountaintops. And we need a God that helps us in the weeds, right? When you get down and you're talking to people like, hey, it's not scientific. Science says you're either male or female. Brother John Sanger, he's not here. He's over teaching the other. He, they're in the nursing business. They're like, you can self-proclaim that you're anything. You say, I'm a, I'm a dog, I'm a cat, I'm a tree, I'm a speaker, I can be, well, that's all great, and you can say whatever you want to say, but we're going to take a little bit of DNA from you, and your DNA says you're either male or you're female. Amen. It's just science. So somebody that says, hey, look, you're going to call, you're a female, and you're like, you're going to call me a he. Well, that's asking me to believe that if I drop this, it's going to float. It's not scientific. So you're in your mind or whatever you think in your mind, you, don't, you can't make me say or believe something that's, nine, that's uh, not scientific when you are proclaiming something that's not even science-based. How many understand what I'm saying? So I'm telling you that because God has a law called law of gravity, and God has a law, amen, that, that you're either a male or a female. So somebody says, well, I'm not going to live by God's laws. Well, that's fine. You can say that. But, you know, you say, you might say, well, hey, I'm not going to believe in God's law of gravity. God made the law called gravity. Gravity. And it, you do it and it falls down. Say, I'm not going to live by that law. Well, you can proclaim and self-proclaim. I'm not going to do it. But I'm going to tell you, why don't you jump? 
I say, I don't believe in gravity. So if you don't believe in gravity and believing it makes it true, then I should be able to jump and just float all the way to the moon. Well, I don't know. What is it? Uh, What's that? Daryl Griffith had a 48 inch vertical and he got 48 inches off the ground just standing. You basket, he played at U of L. But after 48 inches, the law, God's law, begins to bring you back to reality. So I say that you can self proclaim whatever you are, but God has a law that you're male or female. And the Bible says the books were open in Revelation, and God, every man was judged according to that man's works. So if you were born a male, you'll be judged as a male. If you're a female, you'll be judged as a female. This is just the roadmap, all right? I'm not here to tell you. I'm just telling you the roadmap. And so I, I say that to say you can't break God's law. So God has another law. The Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die, and after that the judgment. You can say, I don't believe in, I don't believe in God. I don't believe it. it's just a fable. It's just, that's fine. You can believe that. That's whatever you want to do. Just like gravity. I don't have to believe gravity. But you will live by God's law of gravity because you can't jump and float to the moon. And God has another law. It's appointed unto man once to die. So they're not going to live forever. And after that, you die. You're going to be judged by Almighty God. You can deny that law, but that you will live by that law. How many understand what I'm saying? It's a fact. It's an absolute. And that's what our nation, that's what the young generation, they can't handle absolutes but God makes decisions that are too great for you I've often said that said sometimes decisions are too great for us to make like I don't know I don't know what dorm I should be in so they just make that up at the thing they say all right you're how old are you you're going in this dorm and so there were some decisions that were too great for us to make whether I should be a man or a woman so God made that decision before the foundation of the world Daniel you'll be born and you'll be a man And so I just want to surrender to God's decisions and God's laws and say, Lord, you've made me a man. Fill me with the Holy Spirit and let me be the best man of God that I can for you, Lord. If God's made you a sister, Lord, you've made me a sister. God, fill me with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Lord, let me dress in modest apparel. Let me have long hair because the Bible says, the roadmap says it's a shame for a woman to cut her hair. Is that that what it's true? Now, maybe next year you hear that Brother Daniel fell off the wagon. And Brother Daniel just, he's doing this and this and like, oh, that's real. But that shouldn't affect you because you have the road map. If here's the, you're in the back and you're traveling up this way, I got the road map. I'm just headed straight up that road map. And Brother Daniel goes to hijacks over this way, hijacks, hey, whatever Brother Daniel wants to do, but I'm, I've got the road map. And I'm saying that's because this is a reality. I've got many of my mentors that pointed me to Christ and pointed me to the message and they, they fell off the wagon. And I was, I want to be, the Bible says in the last days, young men will have vision. And I had a vision. Hey, they fell off the roadmap. I'm not going where they're going. (laughs) I'm not going where they're going. I'm not doing what they're doing because I want to make heaven. (laughs) Something, there's a deep calling in my heart to go to heaven. And I trust that some of you raised your hands and, 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 and something was calling you. I didn't give you that desire. God gave you that desire. There's many young people sitting out in a bar, laying drunk somewhere, amen, high on drugs or out of their mind on drugs, and they wish they had that desire. They wish they had parents, someone that would bring them to the house of God, and they had a desire of God, but they don't have that desire. But you have that desire for God. I'm going to encourage you today to put the blinders on. We come from Kentucky where they have horse races, and they put the blinders on like this, and you put the things on like this so that all you can see is the road map. From there to heaven, I'm going that way. I'm not going to look at the modern movies, the video games, and all the music, and the fashions of the world. I'm not going to get sidetracked. I'm going to heaven and I'm purposing it in my heart that I'm going to go. But that's the choosing that you choose. I can't make that choice for you. I do all I can. I show you the benefits. But somewhere you, Jessica, and your family have to make that decision. Emily, you have to make a choice. No matter what your family, people around, you make a choice. And Rebecca, right? Wasn't it Rebecca? 18 years old, right? God knows you. Amen. I was thinking about that. Brother Ram said this. In the message, Satan's Eden, he said, talking about men and they're perverted, he said, a man can prove he's male, but in his spirit, he's female. He doesn't know which side of the house he belongs to. It's perverted. That's what Satan does. He perverts nations. He perverts churches. He perverts people. He's a deceiver, a a perverter of the original truth. God made a man a man. He made a woman a woman. He dressed them different. He meant for them to stay that way and act that way. One is feminist. One is masculine. And he separated Adam in the Garden of Eden and did this, and he separated Eve from him. 
I mean, we live in an insane world, and it's going to get worse and worse and worse. Listen to me. I'm not prophesying. I'm just looking down the road, okay? They started same-sex marriage, and pretty soon it went to every state. Now they're doing the transgender. It's not going to stop there. It's going to go to where you can marry your horse or your cat or your dog and get insurance for your spouse, which is your cat or your dog. It's going. The devil is perverted. There's no end to the perversion, but God has given us a sound mind. The Bible says God has not given us the spirit of fear. I'm not afraid of what's coming, amen, but he's given us the, not the spirit of fear, but of, of power and of love and of a sound mind. I say, God, in your presence, give me a sound mind. I believe there's young men who say, Lord, give me a sound mind. In the presence of God, Lord, let the Holy Spirit come and empower me and make me a son of God to believe God's word and to live God's word out. There'll be young ladies who say, Lord, I don't want that perverted spirit. I don't know how in my notes, I'm just going to, um, I'm just... So the other day, we moved out of Louisville. We moved to Indiana. Louisville is a very evil, evil city. So we moved from our old church because it was a very bad area, and the Lord provided a place in Indiana. But just a couple of days after we left, a few days after we left in an Episcopal church, it's three blocks from our old church, they had a, a drag show. Do you know what a drag show is? It's where people dress up. Many times they cross-dress, and men will dress up like a woman. If you're a drag queen, you're a male, and you're dressed up like a queen, or you're a drag king, you're a woman that dressed up and become the king like a man. And it's the transgender and cross-dressing and all of that filth, and then they do shows and things like that. It's perverted. And just a few blocks, three blocks from our church, they did a drag show in a church, and they titled it Drag Me to Church. Drag Me to Church. The pictures, and they had all the people down in front of the altar. There's the altar, and the place that is the house of God. The Bible says judgment begins at the house of God. And now all this perversion is in this house. I could preach a whole sermon called Satan's Eden. As it says in Thessalonians, they sit in the temple of God thinking that they're worshiping God. They're actually worshiping Lucifer. And now in the church, of, uh, in a place that's supposed to call out sin, now they're doing this cross-dressing where Deuteronomy 22 5 says, it's an abomination for God to God for a man to put on a garment that pertains to a woman or for a woman that put on a garment that pertains to a man. It's an abomination to God. And God judged Israel for their abominations. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit uh, more because God's going to judge America. Run from that thing. Don't let the spirit of those spirits come on you. Amen. Those are perverted spirits. Purpose in your heart right now. Amen. Say, Lord, let me die. And those spirits, oh, they're, they're just not out there. They'll come right among us and sneak right into church. And I mean, they were here 20, uh, 30, 40 years. Of, you know, I went to a place one time. This stuff's all kind of personal, you know. <clears throat> So I went to a church one time, and this man said, hey, you want to go out to eat? Can I say that? So I went to this place, and this man, he was an older man. And he was, I, was, I was like 18, and he'd come, and he, uh, he took me out to eat. He said, hey, I want to take you out to eat. I said, okay, great, sure. I was, I, was from, and I was in another country. And so this man, he takes me out to eat. And so um, we go, and we eat, and I got the menu. Is this bad to say this, or is this kind of like where we live? So I got the menu. I'm looking at this. He goes, you know what, you got a special gift. I'm like, oh, okay, great, great. I said, I'm looking at my thing, and I thought, like, Lord, help me. And he said, you got a special gift. I said, you really, what's that? He said, you got a special head. I'm like, oh, God, Lord, help me. And I was like, just, and I was just sitting there, and I was just talking, and we kind of made it through that, and then we got in the car, and we drove back to the place he was going to drop me off the place, and you know, the, the Bible says they greeted one another, and they embraced in the Bible, and they actually kissed one another, holy kiss, it wasn't on the lips, it was on their neck, they would like hug, and they would kiss one another, it was just a greeting, a culture in that time, so we just embraced, and then we sat there and talked a little bit, and he said, can I hug you again? I'm like, oh, Jesus, get me out of this car. Evil spirits, this is 30 years ago, coming, creeping right into the church, Amen. Those are evil spirits. But I tell you, in the name of Jesus, it will cast those spirits away. A little situation. These are things I encounter in my life. One time we were in a service. And I don't know. I, I, I just feel the Holy Spirit bringing these stories back. They're not in my notes. So I was, we were in this service, and the power of God was just like last night when Brother Jeremy preached, and you feel the presence of God, and the Holy Spirit is moving. You don't want to look at other people. You just want to be lost in the presence of God and worship God and love Him and pour your heart out to Him. That's your service. That's when God's talking to you. You might have a burning bush, or God's got your face in the dirt like He did St. Paul, and God is making a great messenger of Moses, or God is great in a, making a great prophet of God of, uh, of Paul 
Paul and he's beginning to shape. And Paul's saying, Lord, what would you have me to do? And he tells him, he begins to give him the instructions in his life. And we were in one of those services and the Holy Spirit was so great. And we came out of the service and I got in my truck. I was driving along and my wife wasn't with me. And I got in a truck and I was driving out and this man needed a ride. And I don't usually give people a ride, but man, I was just so happy and free in the Holy Ghost. And that's what the Holy Spirit will just where the Spirit of the Lord is their liberty. I was so happy. And this man, I said, hey, get in and give you a ride. And I had a little truck there and he opened the door and I said, he said, oh, you have trucks. And I said, yeah, it's for my boy. He said, oh, you have boys. Like, oh, no, Lord Jesus. <laughs> and I didn't know. And so I, I remember when I asked him to get in, I took my wallet and I threw it behind the seat. I thought, Lord, if he's going to kill me, he's not going to get my money. So I, <laughs> I hid it behind the seat. So he, the man gets in. I said, where do you want to go? He said, I want to go to Cherokee Park. Well, that's the hangout for the homosexuals in our city. There's a park and they take them there. I'm like, oh, Lord Jesus, now this man is in my car. What am I going to do? And I got to the place. I said, you know what? It's me or him. Here we go. I said, you know what? We just came from a Holy Ghost filled service where the Holy Spirit was the discerning and the power of God there. And man, the Holy Spirit was so real and the, and the fire of God and burning. And we know that the judgments are coming on the world and the, God's going to burn this world up for the sin that it's created, just like Sodom and Gomorrah and the homosexual sins. And God's going to burn this place up and destroy the earth because of their sins. And I've been in the presence of God and I'm full of the Holy Ghost. He said, let me out. <laughs> let me out. <laughs> and he opened the door. <laughs> Oh, praise God. There's power in the name of Jesus. Every demon, Jesus said, I am he that was dead and I'm alive forevermore and have the keys of death and hell. And every power in hell is subject to the name of Jesus. When you get in trouble, name the name of Jesus. He got out. His name was James. He got out and he opened the door. And, he, and I said, James, you need to get saved. He pushed the door says, I am saved. And he pushed it closed like that and he walked away. And I realized those are not just spirits. They're religious demons. They'll come right in the church and they'll sneak in the church. That's why you need your road map. That's why you should never lay your road map down. No matter who you're with or who you're around. And even religious people, message people, whatever it is. Hold on to your Bible. God made me a man. I'm a man. God made me a woman. Amen. To be a woman. And God wants to empower me to be that. So when the devil comes and says, look, boys, just wear those sissy shorts, those women's underwear and go out in public. And you're, you're just a sissy. You're a sissy. So, oh, Brother Daniel, how's this? I know they go on that uh, God's power of transformation. The prophet of God brought it up. But I'll, I mean, I'll show you. Brother, the prophet of God is not looking at the garment. He's looking at a spirit that's possessing that man. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you how you identify it. You watch those sissies out there mowing their grass and their little, their shorts going along there. And you go up and ask that man, hey, young man, let me ask you something. Or older man, whatever you are. Do you have the power to tell your wife that we're going to a church that baptizes in Jesus' name? And wife, you're going to take off those clothes that are abomination to God. And you're going to put on a garment that's a dress and we're going to dress holy. Those men can't do that because they have a sissy spirit on them. And we want the Holy Spirit on them. We want men that are full of the Holy Ghost. Something down inside of them. Because if you have the Holy Spirit, you don't choose a woman like that. Because you know she won't be a helpmate to you to be a son of God. I'm going to preach choosing a bride right here. You watch a man, no matter how spiritual and what he does in the presence of God and all his manifestations, you watch what he chooses. And if he chooses that kind of a woman, you know that something's wrong down inside of him. That message is choosing a bride. Before you ever think about getting married, you listen to the message choosing of a bride. The prophet of God said, if you take that girl and she's got that wild stare in her life and she's just like, ah, he said, she won't have the morals to stay home and take care of your children. Your baby, she'll just run around and here and there. She may not run around physically, but she'll get on the internet and run around here and here and there all day long. And like, what'd you do today? I just ran around on Facebook. You don't want somebody like that. You want somebody that's going to help you, be a helpmate to you. We see how God has a church of God that he wants to empower them and move the kingdom of God forward. That's what we're doing at this camp. We're building a kingdom. We're not building a church. We're building a kingdom, the kingdom of God. Jesus said, I will build my church. It's a kingdom. And the gates of hell will never prevail against that. People that try to just build a church, they're narrow-minded. We're building a kingdom of God. That's where I meet you. I don't know where you are, but I want you to get full of the Holy Spirit. I want you to go back to your church. Maybe you call up your pastor and say, look, I haven't been the daughter, that I, the daughter of God that I should be, but something's changed in me. I'm pushing the kingdom of God forward. Go tell your mom and dad, say, something's changed in my life. Mom, I'm going to obey you. Dad, I'm going to obey you. Because that's the evidence that you have the Holy Spirit. But he's Ephesians 6.1. Children, obey your parents. 
And when your parent says, look, I don't want you with that person. They're taking you down a wrong road. Something inside you. Yes, mom, you're right. I don't want to follow that. I don't want to be with that boy. I don't want to be with that girl. They're going to pull us in a wrong direction. But you have to purpose in your heart. Hey, man, just like Daniel did. I was thinking about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I'm going to close here in just a few minutes. I got my countdown timer right here. Like, ha, 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 ha. Not one of those Revelation 10, 6 preachers. Time shall be no more. I got my countdowns. I'm conscious of time. The Hebrew, three Hebrew children, they got them up there. They said, look, we're going to play this music one more time, and you will bow to our culture. You will bow, Shadrach, Me. But you know what? There's something about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They've been to youth camp. And somebody had told them the roadmap to heaven is the word of God and the commandments of God. And they'd been taught that there was Jehovah and he had laws, the Ten Commandments. And the Ten Commandments, we're talking about them. If you could quote the Ten Commandments, they're really good commandments. The first one is, thou shalt have no other God before me. The second is, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. How many know the Ten Commandments? So they, they cover out them and say, look, we're going to give you another chance. Just before we take you and we end your career and your whole life and throw you in the fiery furnace, we're going to give you one more chance that you can bow down and worship this thing. And you know what, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, maybe they thought about their mom. Maybe they thought about Brother Daniel at youth camp that told them about the Ten Commandments. Said, we don't need another chance because the Ten, the Ten Commandments don't change hearing the music played again. If you play the music again, it doesn't change what they taught me at youth camp. They don't change what's written on the road map there that I shall have no other God before me. And I can't bow to a graven image. How many understand that? They had an absolute in their life. And the absolute was the word of God. That's what we're trying to get you. You don't get out there when they say, look, your career is going to be ended. Joseph's sitting there. He's at the top right next to Potiphar. He has this great career. And his wife comes to him and says, look, you've got to do these sexual favors to keep your career. He said, I'm out. I'm out. And so the world might say, hey, look, you got to dress like this, and you got to wear these leggings, and they're so tight, and this and that. And you say, I'm out. I'm out. The other day, I don't know, we were driving up here. We went somewhere to get some ice cream. I think it was Friday night. And this lady, I was sitting in my car doing something, talking to somebody on my phone or something. And this lady got out, and she went into the place and went out. My wife came out and said, that is so gross. I said, what was it? I kind of thought it was whatever that was that went in there. And she says, in those leggings, that's really bad. And they got this thing like, you do you. You ever heard that saying? You do you. You do you. And my wife says, no, we, we need to tell people, don't do you. <laughs> don't do you. That's gross. That's terrible. Cover that up. The world is evil, but it's prophesied in the roadmap. Listen to me. It shouldn't be a shock to you. That's what, uh, that's what Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, 21, right in there, it says, In the last days they will be naked. And that's what those leggings are. It's not fashion. It's not a garment. It's skin. It's just a skin. It's fulfilling the scripture. If you look at the road map, it will tell, let you know we're living in the seventh church age uh, that we're living in. It'll tell you they're rich and increased with good and people are going to be naked. That's what those leggings are. Can you, can you, are you with me? It's just what is skin? It's something that holds the, the bones and the muscles together. It's just the skin and they're naked and they don't even know it. Somewhere in our culture, it's clicked in their minds that that's clothing when it's not. It's fulfillment of the scripture. They're naked. But there's a group of people that will purpose in their heart and the Holy Spirit will come to them and make it in their heart, not just their mind. It comes to your mind. You say, yeah, that's the word of God. But now you need the Holy Spirit to drop it from your head. Lord, make it a revelation in my heart. Make it a revelation in my heart. What was it with Peter when they come like they were going to take Jesus and it, and it was really the flesh. But after a while, it dropped down in his heart. And on the day of Pentecost, they were in the upper room and then they went in afraid that they were going to, that they were going to kill him. And they were going to kill him just like they did Jesus. But when they were full with the Holy Spirit, when it dropped in the heart, they went out and said, this same Jesus you crucified is both Lord and Christ. Now it dropped in their heart. The Bible says in what is it? Hebrews chapter 11, many of them love not their life even unto their death. Was something that dropped in their heart and they purposed in their heart. I'm telling you, these people, there's a lineage. Brother M tells us there's a lineage all the way from the book of Genesis all the way to the end. Brother M said there's a scarlet thread of the blood that runs all the way through that. It's a prophet looking down telling us this. He said, and people will come by faith, maybe even a youth camp. They'll reach out and they'll grab by faith onto that scarlet cord of the faith in Jesus Christ, the finished work at Calvary. They'll latch onto it, maybe one here, maybe one there, maybe a brother here, maybe over at the altar, maybe down here, and they'll latch onto that scarlet cord of the blood of Jesus Christ and faith in it. And Brother Random said, one day Christ will grab that thread and he'll pull it. And everyone that's connected to that cord of the blood of Jesus Christ, by faith, he'll pull it and he'll pull them into a rapture and they'll be lifted up. And the world will be left in perversion and corruption and filth and all hell will break loose. 
my, I've got so much here on my heart. Will you give me just like uh, two more things, two more things? The other day I was fishing. I just got to say this real quick. I was fishing. Beautiful day, sun shining. I was fishing. And I don't like to fish, but I like to catch fish, but I don't like to do all the lures and all that stuff. I just, I have two poles and they have lures and I fish and they don't and they're not biting. So that's how, I, but I was just uh, fishing and so I caught this little bass. He's about that long, Christian. I pulled him up. And there's something about these fish, when you, right when you pull them up, they thrash like this. But it has two treble hooks on it, and I pulled it up, and, it, and it, when it did, it jerked the treble hook right into my finger. And I've got a picture here. You probably can't see it, and you probably don't want to see it. And I pulled it up, and I, it was hooked there, and I was, now I'm caught. I've got this fishing pole. I've got this lure. It's a Rapala lure. Treble hook stuck all the way in my finger. It was all the way past the barb, and I'm pulling it, and I can't get it out. And so I'm sitting there. I'm like, What? I was just fishing and having a great day and catching these little fish. And all of a sudden, I've got this pole. I don't have anything to illustrate a pole. So I've got this pole in my arm. It's got a string coming down. I'm holding this. The bash is thrashing around and like this. So now I'm holding this thing, and I'm walking like a cripple up to my car like this, holding this. I'm like, how did this happen? I was just having a good day, and now I'm all just, and every time he thrashes, like, hurts. It's like, ah, what am I going to do? And I was just walking on there. So I, I did what you, you're supposed to do. You always simplify things, right? You divide and conquer. So i like, first thing i got to do is get rid of this fishing pole. So I pulled my mouth up, and I bit the line off, and I set the fishing pole aside. So now i just got this hook in my finger. I'm like, okay, and it has a little split ring in it, There's a, a split ring that holds the thing on it. I was like, you know, I don't want to ruin this whole lure. So I had to get in my truck, and I'm holding the bass and this thing, walking to my truck, trying to get my truck and open the tailgate and get in my tackle box to get my, uh, my um, pliers out to cut the thing. I get in there, and I'm getting it with one finger like this, and I'm pulling. I'm like, how did this happen? And that's the way life is. Sometimes you're like, how, how did I get here? Maybe you get in a situation, maybe you're online, you're trying to say something nice to somebody, and then it comes back and it all blows up. And you're like, how did I get here? And everybody thinks I'm weird, and you're, you're in this situation. And so I finally get the thing, and I take it off, and I get the pliers, and I cut the barb off, and now I just have a barb hook in my thing. That's a three-prong hook. you got fishermen there. I got this. I'm just running around. And I'm like, hey, I'll just forget about it. I'll just go like, no, you can't. you got this hook in your finger. Like, ah, that hurts. And so I cut the other two hooks off, and now I just got one hook in my finger. And I thought, look, how do I get this thing out? And I kept trying to pull it backwards. You take a pair of pliers and you pull it backwards, and I got it. And, I, and when I was trying to do it, I realized all the blood wasn't from the fish. It was from my finger. It was all bleeding. And I, I, one time I get queasy. I, you ever get queasy when you see blood? And I, I started to get queasy. I'm like, oh, no, I'm going to pass out of here. My wife's going to come find me out here. And, uh, I got this thing. But I realized, you know what? I, I got to get through this. And sometimes you're in situations in your life. You're like, I got to get through this. And I purposed in my heart, and I realized, you know what? I can't get this barb out. I took the pliers and tried to pull it, and it wouldn't come. So I had to push it all the way through my finger. I had to just push it through my finger. I know you, that's the way I felt, too. But I realized, you know what? I can just drive to the hospital, charge me $4,000 or whatever it is, and they're just going to push it through, too. So somewhere i got to man up on this, Daniel, <clears throat> do a little surgery. So I went in my truck and got this knife out. I couldn't get the barb to come through. So I cut an X right where I thought the barb would come through. And I cut it right there, an X, and I, I pushed it all the way through my finger. And then I pulled it out, and I pulled the barb out. And I was like, oh. And then I just rubbed it a little bit like that. Went on. Five minutes later, it was gone. I was fishing, and everything was good. But the Lord began to deal with me that in my life, and I was purposed because I thought, I'll just leave that barb sticking out like that, but I couldn't. I couldn't pull it out. Some things in life you just got to go through. you got a purpose in your heart. i got to go through this. I mean, sometimes you maybe have a family or a situation. Maybe it's a sickness. You have to purpose. I'm going to go through this. God is my healer. God is going to bring me through this situation. God's going to, and you purpose in your heart like Daniel. God will bring you through it. They said, you know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they stood for God. And they, they said, we're not going to bend. And they threw him in there. But in the midst of the fire, oh, praise be to God. The fourth man began to appear. And he said, he looks like, a, like the son of God begins. And God, in your fire trial that you're going through, God will appear to you. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. People that have purpose in their heart that they're not going to defile themselves. God said, I'll be with you. Well, I could give testimony after testimony of how God has kept me, amen, through the fiery things. So many things I just want to, I just want to skip over here. Daniel came later in his life. He came to a place. They, they said, look, you got to pray to our God. God is an object to worship. He said, look, you can't pray to Jehovah, the creator God. You have to worship our gods and pray to our gods and our men and our objects of worship that we've set up in our culture, whether it's Elon Musk or 
or, or uh, Zuckerby who has Facebook and all. You got to worship these things. He said, no, he purposed in his heart. And he said, I'm out. Remember, he was all the way at the top. You read it after the, 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 the Babylonian kingdom fell and Darius came in. The other kingdom, Daniel said, no, I'm out. You can have it all. And he went to a fiery furnace, but inside the fiery furnace. It wasn't that Daniel did little tricks and mesmerized the lions. That same pillar of fire that you saw in that picture, Brother Ram tells us, came into the, into the, the, the den of lions and held the lions back. And the king came and started, the unbelievers were fasting. The king fasted all night trying to say, oh, Daniel, Daniel, how did you? Oh, king, live forever. My God has delivered me. And again, someone that purposed in their heart, God delivered him. And God will deliver you if you purpose in your heart to serve him. I just want to close with this. It's kind of a sobering thing. And. The Bible says, if you read on in Daniel, the Bible says Daniel began to study the books of other prophets, and he realized it was time for them to go home. And the Bible says when Daniel saw that it was time, he said he set his face to praying and fasting and seeking God, and he began to pray and say, oh God, we've transgressed your laws. I'm going to read this. We have sinned. We have committed iniquity. We have done wickedly and rebelled even to departing from thy precepts and thy judgments. Talking about even our nation, around our nation that we see today. Neither have we hearkened unto thy servants, the prophets, which spake in the name of our kings and princes and our fathers and all of our lands. And as it was in that day, we're seeing it is happening again in our day. Our nation is not a heathen, a godly nation. It's a heathen nation that is falling. And when that happens, there's godly people that begin to sigh and cry and say, oh God, will you deliver us? Because we have an exit plan. It's a rapture. God is going to send a rapture. And I want to end this sermon. Uh, I didn't get to it over in James where it talks about every age group being sober. I want to leave this, uh, close this sermon with soberness and being sober because we've had a prophet. That prophet that we showed on the screen had seven visions in 1933. I'm going to go through these very quickly. He saw that the uh, Mussolini and the three isms, fascism, Nazism, communism, it all end up in communism. He showed the advances in science. He showed us, told us that there would be a driverless car. They would just drive. There wouldn't be anything. And we're seeing that being fulfilled. He had a vision of the, the moral plot of the women. The women would go around there almost naked. We see it with the leggings and, and, and the, the, the things, the immorality. The women are almost nation. He's seeing this in 1933. The sixth vision that he had that the women, there'd be a powerful woman that would rise in America. He said it may be the Roman Catholic Church or the woman that will become vice president or president. We have a woman that's the vice president. This was back at the time where they didn't even let women vote. And now we see these six visions come to pass. Listen to me very carefully. And the prophet that came in our day, his seventh vision was was he saw America completely in ashes. He said, I heard an explosion. I looked in all of America, the great cities, Indianapolis, Los Angeles, uh, New York City, Chicago. It was all in ashes. It was brought to ruin. Listen to me, young people. We've had a prophet, a vindicated prophet come in our day and say, that's the future of America. What do I do, Brother Daniel? What do I do? Well, we've got a father that watches over us. And God never causes the righteous to suffer with the wicked. And there's a rapture. The Bible says you'll not all sleep. You're not all going to die in a nuclear blast. But you'll be changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye and caught up to meet the Lord with the air. There's a rapture. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with a message. The voice of the archangel and the dead in Christ will rise first and will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. And there's a group of people that purpose in their heart, I'm going to be ready for that rapture. I'm not going to let anything deter me. I'm purposed. I see the roadmap. I'm, I'm set my, as the Bible say that Jesus, he saw the word of God. Lo, it's written in the volume of the book to do thy will. And Jesus Christ set his face as a flint towards Calvary. And you as a young lady, you as a young man have to purpose in your heart. Set your face as a flint. The rapture is my number one goal in my life. And I'm not going to let any friend, family, culture, anything around me deter me. I'm going to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm going to purpose in my heart because we've had a vindication a prophet that told us the future of America. I know we're all laughing and joking and they do the, the red carpets and they do their gay parades and their pride parades, but God, the Bible says, the roadmap says that all that was written when he destroyed Sodom. Listen to me, I'm going to close. He said Sodom and Gomorrah when he destroyed them with fire out of heaven, he said it was all written for an example. You know how big the city of Sodom and Gomorrah was? 8,000 people. 8,000 people. 
the city of Jeffersonville, I think there's 30,000 people. There's, it's, our little city's four times bigger than Sodom and Gomorrah. So we see that it did not just happen in a little city, but now across the world, all across the world, the globe and the continents, all the continents, is this LGBT thing, not just perversion with men and men and women and women, but crossing the genders and gender fluid. With, your, with the women, I'm a female, and when I'm with the men, I'm a man, and it's gender fluid. There's no such thing. It's nonsense. It's of the devil. It's not scientific. We need to shake ourselves and purpose in our hearts. God, I want to set my mind on things of love and set not your affections on things of this world, but set your affections on things of God and shake us to a soberness and a sincerity of our salvation comes from faith in the word of God and not an emotion of running or jumping. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. When all around me, everything gives way. My faith in the word of God is my hope and stay. I believe there's young people that want to be like that. How many young people we have say, I want to surrender my life completely to Christ. I want a purpose in my heart. Amen. Let's bow our heads if the musicians will come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's room at the cross for you. I wonder if we could sing it together. Heavenly Father, Lord, as we bow our heads, Lord, as I stand here gripping this pulpit, Lord, with the fear of God in my heart, Lord, I want a purpose in my heart today, Lord, when I see the prophecies that lie before us. Lord, as your prophet, I'm thinking of his prophecy when he was in California and Los Angeles the last time, and he was preaching choosing of a bride. Lord, and he screamed out the prophecy, Los Angeles, Los Angeles, you'll sink beneath the ocean, flee to God. Lord, I stand here encouraging the young people, not in a frenzy of frolic and fun, but Lord, flee to Jesus Christ. He is our Savior. He is our Deliverer. Cast away the world and the things of the world, the habits and the sins that so easily beset us. Lord, may you strengthen us today in the Holy Spirit. May young people in a sound and sober mind make a decision and purpose in their heart to serve you with all of their heart, to cast away the world and the pleasures of the world. Lord, they're just for a season, Lord. As Brother Jeremy said, that rich man, he wouldn't empty himself out. He found himself in hell in a place of torment, God. May, Lord, all those under the sound of my voice feel the urgency of the Holy Spirit, Lord, to get into Christ, get away from this world, the cosmos ordo, and flee from the wrath that is to come, Lord, and come into Christ, and not to be lethargic and wait till another day, another tomorrow, a day when it's too late. But, Lord, today is the day of salvation. May you hear their cry and their voice, those that raised their hands and wanted to reply, respond to you. May you bless them today, I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's all stand and sing this song. There's room at the cross. There's room at Hallelujah. the cross. Oh, just surrender all of your life to the Lord Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. There's room. Amen. Take a virtual journey towards the cross of Christ. Just close your eyes, raise your hands. Say, Lord, I want to surrender all of my life to you today, Lord Jesus. Lord, I want a purpose in my heart this morning. Lord, to come to the foot of the cross and surrender my life to you, Lord. Lord, let conviction grip my heart. Let the frolic of the world pass away, Lord. Lord, let me come to the re reality of Jesus Christ this morning. Take every soul 
soul in your hands. Lord, take every soul into your care today, Father, we pray, Lord. Consider yourself dismissed. Amen. It's God's dealing with your heart. He deals with us each one in different ways. I was watching the other night how one brother is over here just praying and pouring his heart out to God. I thought, Lord, that was me years ago. Even yesterday, just crying, Lord, in your presence. Like, Paul, Lord, here am I, Lord. What would you have me to do? Lord, what do you want me to do? Will you lead me? When sister and I went to my cabin at 11 o'clock, she was still in the sanctuary praying, Lord, what would you have me to do? Lord, lead my life. I don't want to be like the goats, just the Bible says straight is the gate, narrow is the way that leads to life. Broad is the gate that leads to destruction, and many go in that way. But Lord, I don't want to be like that. I just want to follow you, Lord, humbly and simply. I believe God has a work for every one of you young men to do. I believe God has a work for every one of you sisters to do, and God wants to give you the Holy Spirit and empower you to be the daughter of God that you should be, to shine a light across the world on social media or whatever it is that what a Christian should really be. Let's just sing this song, and amen. You're dismissed if you need to go, if you want to stay in prayer. Let's just dedicate our Lord's hearts to the Lord. Draw me near. I'll just lift your hands to the Lord. Let it be your prayer. Mirror, blessed Lord. To the cross where love has died. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious name. I am thine, O oh Lord. I've heard your voice this morning. Skip practice at 3 o'clock. Skip practice at 3 o'clock. Oh, draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord. Draw me.
Jesus, Jesus. 